All right, now let's see the memory area in S7-1200. So we have this chart which shows different memory area and its description. Now first is process image input. As I told you before, we have a special memory allocated for the inputs. So let me take a pen. So this, this is the memory area dedicated to my inputs, which will read the status of inputs and it will store its status in the memory. Okay. So it also, it also say the CPU copies the state of physical inputs to iMemory. iMemory is the input process memory at the beginning of the scan cycle. Okay. Then you have process image output. So this is for the outputs. So it will store the value of the outputs in some another memory. Okay. The CPU copies the state of Q memory to the physical outputs at the beginning of scan cycle. So whatever value you have in the process image, it will be copied to the outputs. Okay. So what happened inside the PLC? First, your inputs are stored in a memory. Okay. Now by this memory, this logic is solved. Okay, if this is if this is true, this will be true, and the status of these outputs will store in another memory. I'm calling it as M2. Let this be M1. Okay, so this is coming from my switches. So switches give the information to this memory. Logic is solved. The output is stored in the output memory, and this gives the output to my output terminals, which will indicate, which will turn on the indicator in that case. Okay, so that's how the information is flowed. Physical input store the value in process image input. Logic is solved. The output status of this uh, letter logic output is stored in the memory, and this memory gives the status to the output terminals, which will actuate your outputs. Okay. Then you have a bit memory. Now, bit memory we have some special memory in our PLC. One is a general bit memory one is a specialized bit memory specialized bit memory has some special functions which for example you have internal clocks internal clocks in plc which will be on and off by its own interval you can use this internal clocks in your logic okay so this clock if i say it's a special memory clock this will be on and off by itself okay so you, i can use that special memory in my logic okay then you have a general memory which is used for latching for you know making some timer circuits you can use some normal bit memories in that as well we can see that in the in our programming lessons then you have temporary memory now what happens if you have a lot of input and outputs plc sometimes store the result in a stack okay stack is uh, it's a group of memory allocated for making the logic for processing the information okay so we call it as a local memory or a temporary memory. So it says it is used during the execution of the block, execution of the logic. Okay. When the logic execution of the code is finishes, the CPU reallocates the local memory for execution of other code blocks. So this got cleared as well. So if stack is cleared, it can be used for another process of information. Okay. Then you have a data block. Now suppose my input is, uh, is actually connected to a sensor and my sensor is used to read the number of blocks, number of boxes, number of portals, so it could be anything. And I want to store that information in my PLC, I will use data blocks. Okay, data blocks is generally can be, you know, displayed in your HMI, in your touch screen. Suppose here you can count how many bottles are coming, how many boxes are going, how many people are coming. So that information is stored in special memory, which is known as data block. Okay, so data block, is can be used in FBs or letter logics. So it, it's generally read and write. You can also erase this memory. You can rewrite this memory. And this can be stored in, it says byte, bits, bytes, words, or double word. Okay. It says you can use, also you can use for timers and counters. For example, you want to change the time of your process. So that time value will be stored in a data block. All right. So these are the different memory areas. It's S7-1200. Okay, let's proceed to the next slide. Okay, now you have a fact which you should read. It's generally a fact which may help you in your logics. Now, next is wiring the inputs and outputs. This is one of the main, you know, subject of this lesson because many a time there are confusion how to wire the inputs, how to wire the outputs because incorrect wiring or incorrect wiring of input and outputs will may lead to some accidents as well. 
okay so starting with wiring the s7 1200 so we are using this model number so this representation of wiring is of this model number so you can check your plc as well the basic fundamentals are pretty same so starting with we have seen the line one and neutral this is given line one and neutral from the power source okay to energize the plc to provide line and neutral which will provide power to all the inputs and processor of the plc okay then you have 24 vdc output which is lm l plus and m okay now this im is the common of your inputs i'll come that come to that later but first let's understand this 24 vdc as i told you is converted from this ac okay this ac is converted to dc by the power supply which is already inside this plc okay so let me take a pointer yeah so this converts into dc so this dc is inside the plc which you can use for various various purposes so one of the purposes is to wire the inputs now how to wire the inputs it's it says 24 vdc inputs you have to check your additional input status whether it's dc or ac so in our case it's dc inputs okay if it is ac its wiring will be different so this is for dc inputs it says 8 into 24 vdc 6 milliampere per point it means every input can only bear 6 million pairs of current it draws 6 million pairs of current okay so be careful with your inputs so how to connect that so if you see this 1m now let me change my my ink color now this 1m this is the common of my plc now what i have done is i have connected a wire from 5 to 6 now this 4 wire is this is in pink color this is represented by 24 volts okay i have written here this is 24 volts l plus but this m wire is it's a zero volt so i will take a black color this is zero volt okay so zero volt is connected to my six number so six number is having zero volt okay now what i have to pro provide to seven eight nine ten to turn on the input it's the 24 volts so we have to maintain a potential difference between the input terminals and the common terminal which is i m so this is common to all the inputs here okay so if zero volt is connected to i m you have to connect 24 volts to other inputs to activate it so if you see a wire is coming from here and it's coming to the switch so we have eight switches so this is similar to what we have in our plc simulator if i open up this for you now if you can see here here we have m so this m is given 24 volts and this one two three four is it's getting 24 volts from my switches from my switches that's why if i turn on the switch my led state is going on and off okay so if i turn on the switch that's how it's getting 24 volts and my status is getting on and off okay so if you turn on the switch this particular led will be on if you turn off the switch this led will goes off this is how you connect the inputs it's very simple you just have to maintain a potential difference between your plc and this between your im common terminal of plc and your input terminals that's how you connect the inputs very simple now coming to analog inputs now you might wonder why we use analog inputs this is just for switches on and off or limit switch or sensors proximities now for analog input you might know a device known as potentiometer okay this is a potentiometer we can also say it as pot now potentiometer is a variable resistance okay when you move this wiper its resistance changes so it has a resistance rating written on the potentiometer so let's let's assume it has 5 kilo ohm internal resistance of this not internal the resistance of this part is 5 kilo ohm between this this leg and this leg this is 5 kilo ohm but this middle leg will give you variable resistance so this is from 0 to 5 kilo ohm okay sorry for my bad head writing i'm using a mouse so this is 0 to 5 kilo ohm so what happens when you supply if you see this wiring what, what we are doing here is this is my a power supply and generally it is 10 volt okay 10 volt power supply which supplies positive 10 from this positive terminal and 0 from this negative terminal so 0 is connected to one part 
one terminal, one leg of my potentiometer, and positive is connected to three terminal. Okay, this is a joint. So this zero is also going to my two M. Two M is the common of my analog input. One M was the common of my digital input. So this is getting zero volt. Now this two is having a variable resistance output. It means it is a voltage divider. It will give me variable output. So from so the voltage was zero to ten volt in this potentiometer. It is given ten volt. So the output from this this leg will be zero to ten volt. Okay, from this potentiometer. So based on its position, if this is at extreme left position, I will get at this position I will get zero volt. At extreme right position, I will get ten volts. If this is at middle position, I may get five volt. Okay, that's how you get the different voltage from this potentiometer. And that voltage is given to my two number pin terminal of my analog input. Now this is about wiring this potentiometer. What happens inside the PLC with this voltage? If this is at zero volt, my PLC will have some digital bits. For example, it says resolution two into 10 bits. Okay, now what is a resolution? Resolution means the conversion rate of your PLC. Okay, two into 10 means each terminal has 10 bit resolution. Two number has 10 bit, three number has 10 bit. So you have two inputs with 10 bit resolution. Now 10 bit is what? Two raised to the power 10, which is one zero two four. Okay, so if my input is zero volt, uh, let me write the range. Let's write three ranges, zero, five, 10 volt. So if my input is zero volt, my conversion bit will be zero. If my input is 10 volt, to my PLC, it will be 1023. But if my input is 5 volt in between, it will be approximately half of it. So if your wiper is somewhere in between, you will have proportional bits in your PLC. So this analog input will tell you the position of your wiper. You can make a logic and you can convert this digital range of bits into the angle or the position or you know whatever you want, how much deviation is there. You can calculate that in angles. So this is one of the examples how to use analog bits, analog inputs. Now we have relay outputs. Now in relay outputs, we have connected some lamps here. This is the indicator. This is the symbol of an indicator. Now what we have done, this is a relay output, six into relay output means we have six relay outputs. It says V, 30 VDC or 250 VAC and A to ampere. VDC means you can connect digital outputs here of the range 30 and 250 VAC means you can connect AC output of this range voltage range and for each range the current limit is 2 ampere per point so 2 ampere each can be given by this outputs so internal relay has ampere rating of 2 amperes which is quite a decent rating okay so how to connect that now you see that this is L1 this is the line line is connected to my pin number 1 which is IL I is my common and 2L pin number 6. So what happens when the logic inside the PLC is solved? Let me take another pen. Yeah, suppose you have a logic which says this first input and then you have an output here. I'll make an output which is connected to my I0.0 .0, and this is connected to my input. Okay, so what happens if this input goes on? its corresponding bit will be true inside the PLC. So this will be on, this output will be on and suppose this is addressed with 0, 0.0. So what happened this, the common of this output, the line will travel from here to here because this is true. So line will come out and this is now having a line here and this is connected directly to my neutral. So this lamp will be on, okay. That's how your output is wired to turn on by relating the inputs, the letter logic, the letter program inside. If you do not connect anything to pin number one, it will be shorted here, but nothing will happen to the output. So whatever signal you give to pin number one, which will come out from the outputs, if inside the bit is on, corresponding address bit is on. Okay, I hope you understand that. Similarly, if I have connected line to pin number six, if my output, four is on so this line will travel to the seven if five is on this line will travel to the eight 
if 4 is on, this 0 0.2 is on, this line will travel here. So the signal you provide to pin number 1 will come out to 2, 3, 4 and 5 only, not 7 and 8 because this is dependent upon 6. So this one common has 4 output contacts, this common has 2 contacts. So you can also have 4 AC outputs and 2 DC outputs by providing DC here. It's not always necessary to, to short 1 and 6. If you have 2 DC outputs, you can connect DC to 6 number and AC to 1 number. That's how you can change the input and outputs. Okay, then you have Profi Profinet LAN Ethernet port to connect to connect to your PC for programming. So this fact says you have an inbuilt power supply which converts AC voltage to DC voltage. Okay, so let me clear 